Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery, and today I'm going to be talking about the 18 books that I read in September. So as I just said, I read 18 books in the month of September. Um, September was my birthday month, so thank you all for sending me all of your wonderful birthday gifts. I loved every single one of them. Um, I am putting up my birthday book haul soon or it's already up whichever one it'll be up soon if it's not so i thought i would talk about the 18 books that i read in september so let's get started the format for this video is going to be a little bit different than what i normally do normally i go from my least favorite to my favorite book but we're going to be talking about my didn't finish dnfs first then we're going to be going into the two series that i read and then we're going to be talking about the rest of the books from my least favorite to my favorite. So first we're gonna talk about my only DNF for the month, which was Scotsman Who Saved Me by Hannah Howell. This was on Audible Escape. This is the first book in the Seven Brides for Seven Scotsman series. I basically just didn't finish when I was at 50% maybe. I don't remember in all honesty. This book is not memorable to me at all. But this is what I put in my Goodreads review. This was honestly really boring. Also, there's a bunch of killing and things you think the characters would be affected by, but they weren't really. I didn't feel anything that the characters were feeling. I feel like the author just told us a bunch of things instead of showing us and telling us how the characters feel. Also, the romance was just really weird and they like barely talk to each other. I don't really remember like anything about this book, so I guess I just found it really, really boring. And I do remember the killing thing. Like there was a bunch of killing and like no one was affected by killing people. And it was just not for me <laughs> like they didn't even express the feelings towards that it overall is just not a book for me unfortunately okay so we're gonna talk about my series i read two big ones this month and for the first one we're talking about i read seven books in that series because i was obsessed and i still need to continue and that is the immortals after dark series by cressley cole the first book being a hunger like no other so i read all of these on libby all of them are through my library but i ended up finding a few um, at some thrift stores close to me and half price books so that's why i have physical copies of some of these that i'm going to talk about if you love paranormal romance like you need to read these they are amazing <laughs> this is a romance between a woman who is half valkyrie half vampire and our hero is um i forget the name of it is it like a lichen um it's like a different word for kind of like a werewolf the vampires and lichen are like sworn enemies he finds out that she is his mage because he's been like in an underground prison for forever and he like can smell the world above him and then one day he like smells her and like breaks out of this prison and goes to find her and she's like super innocent and sweet and just not what he assumes a vampire is like and i really enjoyed this one uh i think this one and one other one are my top ones in the series i only get i've only given two books in the series five stars so far and this one is one of them i really loved this one and so the second book that i read in the series is no rest for the wicked and this one is a romance between a vampire and a valkyrie who are also sworn enemies and it is really good as well i really enjoyed this one i think i gave it four stars yes i gave this book four stars really enjoyed this one i'm not gonna get too deep into like the summaries for the rest of the books because they're all a part of this overarching series the third one is wicked deeds on a winter's night and i believe this one is with a like and a witch all of them kind of like blurred together because i read them like all of these within one week <laughs> it was crazy i really like this one as well i believe i also gave this one yes four stars then book number four is dark needs at night's edge and this one is between i believe a vampire and then a ghost that was pretty interesting it was just eerie and pretty cool i found this one really enjoyable as well i gave this one four stars then i read dark desires after dusk book number five which is tied with the first book as my favorite in the series this is between like a demon prince and um like a regular woman Oh, and all these, I forgot like to say the main thing. All of these are mate books, by the way. Like all of them are mate books. I love them because they're all mate books. <laughs> so I really like this one. I really connected to our heroine and their romance is just amazing. <laughs> no, wait, I gave three books in this series five stars because I also gave five stars to 
Kiss of a Demon King, book number six. This one was really good as well. It's the romance between um, a demon king who is um, the brother to the last one I just talked about with a sorceress. And they're like sworn enemies, hate to love, but also faded mates. So uh, really good. <laughs> I also listened to the prequel, which is The Warlord Once Forever, one number 0.5 in the series. And this one is between a Valkyrie and a vampire. And it's just a really short one. I ended up giving this one, I think only like 3.5 or four stars. I don't really remember. Um, it just wasn't as entertaining as the other ones to me because it just wasn't as long, it didn't have as much of a punch as the other ones. Like, like there wasn't a lot to the romance, if that makes sense. Um, but I still really enjoyed this one and I can't wait to continue on with this paranormal romance series. I'm in love, I'm waiting for book number seven to come in through the library for me. Again, I really, really, really recommend if you like paranormal romance, please check them out. I've been sleeping on them for so long. <laughs> Next, I ended up completing the Kingmaker Chronicles by Amanda Boucher. This is book number two, which is called Breath of Fire. And this is book number three, which is Heart on Fire. This trilogy is amazing. The first one, where is it? Oh, it's right here. The first one is, whoops, drop that book. The first one is A Promise of Fire. So in all it makes, this trilogy. I read this one a couple months ago. This is a ro fantasy romance trilogy that is absolutely fantastic. I believe all of them are on Audible Escape to listen to. And so the first book starts out with our main character, heroine named Kat, and she is a part of this traveling circus disguised as a soothsayer because she's on the run because powerful people are trying to capture her because she is something called the Kingmaker, which is a magical being that only exists once every 200 years and they have very special magical powers but some bad people are out to get her so she's hiding from them and then our other main character is griffin who is the conqueror of a neighboring land and he put his sister on the throne to that land and he's looking for something or somebody to keep his sister on that throne and so one day he stumbles upon cat in this traveling circus and realizes who she is and he kidnaps her and it's them traveling to his land. Great banter, hate to love. The first one is a slow burn, angsty, bantery romance. And then these two just further their relationship. These ones are not sl slow burn. Like you can presume what happens at the end of book one to make these not slow burn. But this is book two and I gave this one five stars. It was so, 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 so good. And then I concluded with Heart on Fire, which is shorter than all the other ones, which was maybe a reason why I didn't love it as much as the other ones. I ended up giving this one only four stars. It just wasn't what I wanted, in, if that makes sense, for the last book in an amazing trilogy. It wasn't as action-packed and it just was shorter than all the other ones. And like, I just wanted more from it, if that makes sense. But overall, amazing, amazing series. I heard that there's a spinoff. I am so excited because Griffin, our hero in the story, like has these amazing friends, like this amazing friend group. And like all the men in there are fantastic. So I can't wait to read more about them. So now we're going to be talking about the rest of the books from my least favorite to my favorite read. So first we're going to be talking about Savage Beginnings by J.L. Beck and C. Holman. So I really wanted to read this book because this is a mafia romance and I'm trying to read more mafia romance books sad to say this one did not do it for me <laughs> so i ended up giving this one two stars um and it's on kenda unlimited if you would like to check it out this one unfortunately is not for me i posted a full length review on goodreads for this this is definitely on like the darker side of romance if that makes sense our heroine is bought by the hero like her dad sells her to this guy like i believe like on her 18th birthday or something our hero does some not that great of stuff to our heroine like not good good things in all honesty he did not grovel enough and like i don't even think he realized how wrong he was and the stuff that he did which like does not float my boat our heroine was like just really on and off hot and cold for me because i would like her at one minute and then hate her the next because she would realize that her love interest was like doing these horrible things to her being very controlling very alpha male which if you don't like alpha male stories please do not read this because it is alpha male she realized like oh he's doing some pretty crappy things to me i'm gonna stand up to him and say something about it and then she never does because like he like comes onto her or like does something steamy with her and like she just forgets about it and 
doesn't say anything else about it. He was just very, very, very controlling, which is not really what I like to read in romance books. So unfortunately, this one just wasn't it for me. Next, I read Gifting Me to His Best Friend by Katie Robert. This is the second book, a part of the A Touch of Taboo series. These are like steamy romance books that I, I just like gobble up. They're like so much fun to read. I ended up giving this one 3.5 out of 5 stars. It was really enjoyable. It's just not my favorite Katie Robert, if that makes sense. So this is an MMF romance. Our woman main character in this story is married to her husband and then they always go like on trips with her husband's best friend and then like on Christmas they're all in a secluded cabin together stuck there because of a snowstorm. They decide to ring him in for the next couple days as a Christmas present into their bedroom. So it was really fun. It just wasn't necessarily my favorite Katie Robert book but I had a very fun time reading it though. And next I finally <laughs> finished the Pucked series by Helena Hunting. I just had one book left. Audible Escape is ending, so I thought I would read this one, listen to it, because it is on Audible Escape, and so it's called Pucked Love. This is book number six in the series. It is the final book in the series. I gave it 3.5 out of 5 stars just because I feel like it's a little anticlimactic for like being the last book in this series. Just didn't live up for me as I thought it would. I had a lot of fun reading it. It just wasn't like my favorite in this series if that makes sense book number one and book number five take the cake for those favorite ones so this one is a hockey romance this is a hockey romance series and this is about our hero and heroine who you've seen like throughout the whole entire series been like together but not like really together it's weird like they don't like label themselves at this point they've been together for like what like three years like nothing has progressed <laughs> which was really just weird for me and like they didn't know certain things about the other person when they said that they were like together for like three years and weren't with anybody else for three years and it just was really weird i'm just maybe because i have certain expectations when it comes to a relationship that i just couldn't picture that happening in a relationship but maybe it is for other people i don't know but i really had a fun time reading it i loved seeing everybody from like the gang from like the previous books i didn't love their love story as much as some other ones but i had a lot of fun nonetheless next i ended up reading let it shine by lissa cole this was a part of the kindle clear out readathon and this audiobook is on audible escape if you want to listen to it it's so good i ended up giving it four stars this takes place during like the civil rights era our hero in this is named ivan and he is Jewish and white and our heroine her name is um Sophie is it Sophie yes her name is Sophie um she is actually black and when they were kids they were friends um but then one day some crude little white boys started walking by the two of them playing together because they used to play together because Ivan's mom hired Sophie's mom to cook and work in their house and so um, she'd bring Sophie over and they'd play in like in front of his house or in the backyard and these boys came over and started like beating him up basically. Sophie's mom runs out to like figure out what's going on and she ends up having an aneurysm right then and there and she ends up passing away and Sophie and Ivan haven't seen each other since they were little until she's all grown up and she goes to this peaceful like protest rally and he's there. It's just the inner workings of them wanting to be together but trying to figure out how to be together in a society that doesn't want them to be together. This was a really short enjoyable romance book. I had a lot of fun reading this one and it was very informative. I really recommend it. I ended up giving it four stars. Next I ended up reading Beautiful Player by Christina Lauren. This is the third book in the Beautiful Bastard series and I listened to this on Libby and I also read this during the Kindle Clear Out Readathon. So this is a friends to lovers age gap romance. I thought this was so sweet and so much fun. So this is about Hannah and Will and when Hannah was like 12 years old and her older brother was like 19 and in college um like the summer in between semesters in college she, he would bring his best friend will to come stay with them and help work um i think like on 
I think it's like a farm that they lived on a farm or something like that I don't remember um but she ended up developing a crush on him and it's years later Hannah and Will end up in the same city she is really deep into her work she's a researcher and she doesn't have any friends and she doesn't really go and do anything and so her dad and her brother like give her an intervention and it's like you need to make friends you need to go out in the world how about you call up Will he lives in the same city as you here's his phone number maybe y'all can hang out and so they end up hanging out and then they become friends and then it grows into something more and this one was so sweet i think this might be my favorite in the series so far i don't know but this one was just way different than the other two i feel like this one's way sweeter than the other two if that makes sense so i really enjoy this one i feel like you could even like read this one by itself and you'd be completely fine um so I really recommend this one and I can't wait to finish the series. I want to finish this series so badly. <laughs> Next I ended up reading Raven's Return by Ruby Dixon, book number 12 in the Ice Home series. This is her newest release in the Ice Home series. This is a spin-off series to the Ice Planet Barbarian series which are alien romance books that take place on an ice planet. <laughs> And I adore these if you didn't know if you didn't know about me. Hi, I'm Avery I like Ruby Dixon alien romance books <laughs> This one was honestly like so good so good it I've been like in a rut with like the recent ice home books for Ruby Dixon They haven't been my favorite. I haven't felt the way that I felt when I first read like the ice pin barbarian series like I just haven't felt that same spark and love for this series and then I read this one. This one was just like so good. So like Raven, um, she's actually like put on this persona since she's been on this planet and like has been pretending to be somebody she's not because she doesn't want to be like ridiculed against for who she was when she was on Earth. And so she's kind of like made up this false persona of herself. And then she becomes friends with Udron, <laughs> which is one of the aliens and like, He's also hiding something and like is feeling a lot of shame about something that happened to him when he was on an island. They just become very close friends and then somehow Raven goes missing and turns out she may or may not have been kidnapped by somebody that nobody on the planet knows about. This one was so much fun. I love this one. It like really brought back my love for this series. I of course recommend this one. I recommend this whole series guys. And then I have another Ruby Dixon book which is Bound to the Battle God. Oh my gosh, guys, this is the first book in the Aspect and Anchor series. And this is like her series that is like over 600 pages each book. I understand why. I feel like the only reason why I couldn't give it five stars, I gave it four stars, is because it was too long. I felt like some of it could have been chopped out and it would have been good as well. But this is a fantasy romance series, very different than her sci fi ones. And like these are really good, but like if you don't like slow burn romances, you're not gonna like this. They don't get together until maybe like 80%. <laughs> um, but like it just keeps building and building and building and building and oh my gosh. So this whole series revolves around like gods and everything. Apparently in this time period, in this time that this fantasy land is in, I don't remember like the names of the gods because it's not like our mythology, like Greek mythology or Roman mythology. So it's not like the same people so I don't remember who like the Zeus is in this land but basically the father of all of them end up casting all of his children his gods out into the world and into like mortal bodies on the world because they have wronged him in order to like stay on like the plane they need a human anchor a mortal anchor for them to be tied to to walk the earth our heroine in this book actually doesn't come from this fantasy land at all she gets somehow sucked into a, like a portal or something she just opens a door one day in her apartment and she wakes up in this fantasy land <laughs> she ends up getting in like a sticky situation and volunteers herself to be Aaron's anchor not really knowing what that insinuates or what that means to be an anchor and basically like the anchor is your mortality in this world so like she does everything for her god that she's the anchor to like she sleeps for him, she eats for him, and she holds his mortality for him. So basically, if you're an anchor to um, a god, you're basically their mortal being in this world. So she has to travel this land um, to help him complete a task. Her life is bound to his, and if she dies, he dies. So um, it's, it's filled with angst, it's filled with funny one-liners, it's filled with just like a bunch of action and magic. And it was 
so entertaining. Uh, there's one more book out in the series, the novella, the prequel to this one, which is like only a hundred something pages. And those characters pop up in this book. I totally, totally, totally recommend reading the novella first because they pop up later on in this book. And if I didn't know these characters beforehand, I don't think I would love it as much. And like the novella is even better than this one in my opinion. I like the novella way more than this one, but this one was still really good. Again, I love this one. I can't wait to read the next book in the series. There's only one more out, but I can't wait. Next, I ended up reading Blind Fall by Amanda Milo. This is a part of the Kindle Clear Out Readathon, and this filled the prompt for disability representation. This is also an alien romance book, which you probably can't tell by the cover, um, but this is just a short, sweet, like just character driven alien romance book. So our heroine ends up like getting like sucked into space or gets abducted by aliens with her guide dog Coda. She is actually blind so she has Coda to be her guide dog. She is like put up for auction in this on this like farm planet and our hero ends up seeing her like for auction and he realizes there's some like bad men looking at her wanting to buy her and he's like you know what I'm gonna buy her so she doesn't get stuck with these evil men and so he buys her and he takes her back to his farm because um, his friend is like figuring out a way to bring her back to her world and maybe while her staying with him on her farm she maybe end up developing feelings for him and he maybe end up developing feelings for her and it's just super sweet. It's not action packed like at all. It's literally just them like becoming friends and like falling in love on a farm. <laughs> like there's nothing else to it. It was really, really, really great. I really recommend it. Really, really wholesome and sweet. And lastly, we have my favorite book of the month, which is a doozy. And that is Redeeming Love by Francine Rivers. I have a whole entire reading vlog for this book. I'm linking it down below where I am talking about spoilers galore. Don't watch the video if you have not read the book, um, if you don't want to get spoiled. So this is a Christian fiction romance book, which has been very hit or miss for me in the past because I haven't found a lot that I've liked. This one, favorite by far, amazing, amazing piece of work. This is basically kind of like a retelling of Hosea in the Bible. It takes place during the gold rush. America. Our hero named Michael, he ends up seeing our heroine Angel one day in the docks and God tells him to go and marry her. That is going to be your wife. But Michael finds out that Angel is actually a prostitute. You read the story of how Angel got into that life, how she was sold into this as a little girl and it is heartbreaking and disgusting disgusting and like made me so angry and like this book just gave me literally every single emotion you can think of you can see it in my reading vlog i was angry i was sad i was happy i was in love i was bored at points i was like intrigued at points and i was overall just it was like a roller coaster of emotions that led to an amazing amazing book my best friend katie recommended this book for me and she was telling me how this is just an amazing book and by the end you're going to be like broken and crying and in love and i was like 50 percent of the way through and i was like what do you mean by you loving this book this book is horrible and like so sad and heartbreaking like how can you love this book so much and then i finished it and i was like i understand i get it i understand i love this if you have not read this one yet please do it'll change your life so if you want to know my in-depth in-depth thoughts of this please go check out that vlog down below there you go y'all those were the 18 books that i read in the month of september please let me know down below if you have read any of these books or if you plan to but anyways thank you all so so much for watching i will see y'all soon in my next one bye mm -hmm.